If you've been thinking about joining the Society of Children's Books, Writers, and Illustrators, there's one thing to keep in mind, and that's which division or region you fall into because they are not all the same. Some are very involved. They have a lot of activities and ways to be engaged, and others are not. We have a liftoff. SCBWI just announced the winners of their Crystal Kite Awards for 2022 a couple of weeks ago. Basically, this award looks at each region and division within SCBWI, and they pick what they think is one of the best from that year or from the previous couple of years. I'm not sure. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to look at each of those winners from each region and we're going to kind of um, critique the covers of those books. And it's, it's important to keep in mind that the Crystal Kite Awards, they are decided on the whole book. They're judged on the story, they're judged on the cover, they're judged on the illustrations, all of these things put together. We're only going to look at the front cover for this video, but I thought it would be a nice way to compare these winners and maybe how they relate to each region. We're going to start with the Atlantic Division, and this, of course, is along the east coast of the U.S., um, some of the states along the coast there. The winner for this year is... Kate Albus, this book, A Place to Hang the Moon, published by Holiday House. I, I really like this cover in general just because of the illustrations themselves. They're, they're just so beautiful. So much detail there. You can see that there's a definite um, focus on the title as well as the, the doorway with the children. Uh, the, the illustration really matches the story itself. Maybe not so much the title. The title is kind of random if you don't know the story. And so the illustration kind of ties that story in. It's, it's a story about some uh, orphans who eventually find a home. And uh, that's really, I haven't read it myself. That's pretty much all I know about it. But I really love this cover in general, the details that are there. One thing is that the title is pretty small, but you can see in that window there, the dark gray really makes that title stand out, even though it's pretty small. So you can read it in a thumbnail. And that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking about your book. Your book needs to have a title that stands out well. And I don't think it necessarily needs to be large. It just needs to be legible in a thumbnail. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about your own children's book. The one critique that I have about this cover that I don't really like is that it's slightly off center. Actually, Kate's name down, her byline down at the bottom of the cover is on center. But the doorway and the title, the window, everything is off center. And that just, um, if you've got some, some OCD tendencies, maybe you will kind of resonate with me there. I, I just don't like that the cover is, is off center. It just really uh, bugs me. But other than that, it's a beautiful cover. So next we go on to Dark and Shallow Lies. And this is part of the Texas-Oklahoma division. Those are the only two states in this region. And this book is by Jenny Sane and is published by Razorbill, which is a, um, an imprint for Penguin Random House. And uh, obviously, this is not a children's picture book. This is probably a young adult book. It's a very uh, detailed cover. I, I love the, the sort of collage. Of course, it's not a photo. It's been kind of piece together. You've got, um, it, really, the more you look at it, the more you find. Um, I love the, the alligator up in the top right-hand corner and, and uh, just all the, the flowers and everything kind of floating on the water. The other thing that I really like about this book is the way that the title is integrated into the artwork. And it really makes it feel like it's actually a part of the photo, which is uh, really interesting. I like the way that they did that. It looks very natural with the, the cover as a whole. Um, you'll also notice that this cover is very symmetrical. So you can have a symmetrical cover or you can have an asymmetrical cover. And, and this one really works well as a symmetrical cover. Um, everything you know lines up down the center both horizontally and vertically which is kind of interesting but uh, very nice design there from Texas and Oklahoma. There's also no character here except for the gator which 
Typically for a children's book, at least, you want to have a character on the cover. That also kind of lends itself to a young adult uh, title here. But um, if you're doing a picture book, you definitely want to have the main character on the cover. And usually it's going gonna, it's gonna to take up a pretty good chunk of the front cover. You don't want it to be too small. You want it to sort of be the, the main focus of your cover. So moving on to the New York division. This book is Dumplings for Lily by Melissa EY. Sorry if that's uh, pronounced incorrectly, but this is uh, published by W.W. Norton and Company. And uh, I really like the artwork here. It's, it's just, uh, you know, it's got a nice, peaceful and, and friendly mood to it. I, I really like that the, as you see here in my graphic, the, the uh, title has plenty of white space around it. So that really helps to make the title legible. A lot like that first book that we looked at, um, there's, there's plenty of room around the title. Now, what I mean by white space is it doesn't have to necessarily be white like it is here. It's just that sort of the details in the artwork are far enough away from the title that it's, it's not really interfering with the title and so this is really done well here i think she could have gotten away with the green background instead of making it white but that white is the steam rising up from the dumpling so it totally makes sense here um, i think the fonts also are really nice they go well with the theme of the book as well as the illustration um, very nice titling and and treatment here for the title um, it's not just a simple horizontal title. The illustrator or the designer has given, especially the word dumplings, this uh, rainbow effect, a bow in the word there, and it really fits nicely with the title. This cover is also really well broken into thirds, and that's, that's a uh, concept that works well for design. You break the uh, artwork into three pieces basically so you have the top is the title the middle is the character and the bottom is just more details um, so you can see that very clearly here with the uh, the table kind of falling in that lower third the character in the middle third and the title in the upper third very simple balance in thirds here so moving on to the midwest division for scbwi this is headstrong halley and um, looks like it could be a middle grade, not so much a picture book, but more of a, uh, you know, a chapter book, possibly. The subtitle here is The Story of Hallie Morris Daggett, the First Female Fire Guard. So this is based on a true story. This is by Amy Bizonet and is published by Sleeping Bear Press. And uh, really interesting cover here. The first thing I want to say is that it has a strong illustration that supports the title and the story. So, you know, this this illustration is kind of a caricature of Hallie. Hallie actually, of course, looks nothing like this. She doesn't have a huge forehead or a huge brain, but uh, this the way that it's illustrated really complements the title of Headstrong Hallie. So I really like that. I like the way that the um, binoculars are showing the forest and if you look closely you can see the fire in the forest there so that really illustrates the story as well the title is pretty large here it's not a thick font per se but it's it's a large font that takes up the whole top of the page um, i think it complements the artwork pretty well and it it's a warm color which kind of uh, nods to the the fire in the illustration so I think that really works. The subtitle seems like an afterthought here. Uh, it, you know, it's placed in Hallie's hair. It's kind of off center while the rest of it is all center. That subtitle looks a little like um, maybe it was an afterthought. Maybe they added that after they designed the book or, or you know, got ready to publish. I don't know. But um, I think they could have done a little bit more with that. So now we move on to California and Hawaii. And this book is Hello Star by Stephanie Lucianovic. I don't know if that's right or not. Sorry, Stephanie, but um, this is published by Little Brown Books for Young Readers, uh, which is an imprint of Hatchet. Little Star is a really peaceful and inviting cover. I really 
enjoy that title with plenty of white space like we talked about you know you've got that whole sky to work with works well for the theme of the book and i like the uh the cursive font which you don't typically see in a title for a children's book because lots of times they're considered illegible for children but this one is easier to read it's still cursive but it's an easier it's not like a flourished script font and i think you really have to keep that in mind if you're working on a children's book if you're an author not to get into fonts that are so flourished and and have so much detail because then they become hard for kids to sort of connect with especially younger kids this one is is really done pretty well. One thing that I would like to mention here, and this is kind of a, a rule with books in general, is if you have a character, the character should be looking to the right. So this way, <laughs> the way you're looking at me, right? So in this case, the character is looking to the left, which is towards the spine. But the rule of thumb is to point them towards the opening of the book. So it's inviting the reader into the book. I think this cover could have been improved a bit. I think the main character could have been flipped so that she's looking towards, towards the opening of the book and turn that telescope that way. Maybe even you see the star up in the top left. I think that star could have been moved over to the right as well. I'm not sure how that would affect the title per se, but um, I think it's something that they could have thought about a little bit more to sort of guide the reader into the book. And that's something to keep in mind for your book if you're an author working on publishing a children's book. So here's another, um, probably a young adult book. This one is called Heroes of the Secret Underground, and it's in the Australia, New Zealand division. And this is by Suzanne Gervais, published by HarperCollins. And one thing you'll notice right away is the very intriguing design that leads your eyes straight to the characters, the kids in this case, on the cover. Um, and that's very well planned out. You have this very complex cover. It's, it's turned off tilter. You know, it's at a 45 degree angle. And it's a large title and it's got all this movement, but yet the focus is leading you towards those children that are running away from the reader, which is interesting. And now you'll notice that they're, they're running sort of towards the opening of the book, which is good. Um, I would have liked to have seen those kids a bit closer to the reader. I think that would make it more interesting, but I think this really works in this case. This is a really great treatment of a long title. Heroes of the Secret Underground is, is a long title for a book, but the way that they have designed this to fit around the illustration and lead your eyes and, and all of that is, is really powerful. And the red lines really set the mood. You can tell right away what kind of a theme this book has. It's centered around World War II, Soviet Union, all that kind of stuff. And, and um, without sort of showing a swastika, they were able to work that sort of feel into the title or into the cover of the book um, really well. And so you know right away what the story is kind of uh, written around. So here we are in the Mid-South Division, and this is I'll Meet You in Your Dreams by Jessica Young, also published by Little Brown Books for Young Readers. And I believe this is the division that I would be in if I was living back home. Right now I'm living in Norway, but I am from North Carolina and I think North Carolina falls in this division. Um, really great cover. I, I love the movement and the lines. There's a lot of movement in this cover and I really like that. You've got the moon that has that sort of crescent shape. You've got the uh, the movement of the plants and other things in the cover, as well as the character. And even the title itself has some movement to it. This high contrast font works here. The, the, uh, and what I mean by high contrast is it has thin and thick lines. And usually that can be sort of hard to read and you wouldn't typically use that for a title. Usually you would use a font that's a bit thicker all around to make it more legible, but this one really works. And I, and I kind of like the little bit of curviness to it. It really fits with the design of the cover. Um, and it's, it's very legible here. So I think they did a good job with that. The main character is also well-defined. 
she's wearing these, you know, this red dress that really pops on the otherwise cold cover, which makes this main character, even though maybe a little bit smaller, she really stands out. And I think that really works. You've also got the, uh, the warm colored plants over to the left hand side, which kind of bring that balance back and uh, really, really great, well thought out here. So great job um, by the illustrator Rafael Lopez here. So now we're in New England and this is Red, White and Whole by Rajani LaRocca, also published by HarperCollins. Right away, you can see the sort of balance of the cool and warm tones on this cover. You see the, the, the blue and the red that uh, not only strengthen the title itself, but just really brings a lot of emotion to this cover. And it also brings a lot of balance. It, it kind of weights the, the uh, bottom of the cover, which is really nice. The main character is guiding the reader towards the opening of the book, which is perfect. I'm just not sure about this, <laughs> this circle in the middle of hole. And maybe if I knew more about the story, uh, that may make more sense but I would have liked to have seen maybe a full moon here, or maybe it's a cutout showing something underneath on the title page or something like that. I think there's, there's more that could have been, been done there. You know, I get the sense of whole as in a hole in, in the paper rather than whole like something is whole. So um, I'm, I'm a little confused by the circle, but uh, other than that, this is a uh, really great book. Now here is the Middle East, India, and Asia division winner. This is Temple Alley Summer by Sakiko Kashiwaba. I hope that's right. And is published by Restless Books. This is a translation of a Japanese book. I think with the Japanese book, the title in Japanese would probably be down the side like it is that vertical title. I think it could have been flipped around. I think it could have been flipped to horizontal now that it's in English. Um, but other than that, it's a highly detailed, well-balanced illustration. Um, I love the detail in this book uh, or in the cover illustration. I love that it's sort of guiding you down the trail or the road that this girl is, is um, traveling down. I don't know what kind of position she's in right now. I don't know if she's walking or running or skipping. I, yeah, it's hard to tell, but otherwise very detailed illustration there. I was talking about the title. It does match the artwork, but I, I still would have liked to have seen it horizontally and maybe they played with that and decided it didn't work, but we typically want to read horizontally. So I think it would be more natural to have it that way. The character here again is facing the spine and I would have, it would have been so simple to just flip that girl around, have her face the other way. That would have really strengthened this cover so much more. So now we're back in UK and Ireland. And this is The Bear and Her Book by Sophia O'Connor. And it's published by Uclan, Uclan, Uclan Publishing. Right away, I really think that this has a very strong layout. And in design we talk about the z layout or we it's also called a backwards s and that's where we always read across the top and down to the bottom left corner and across the bottom and this is so clearly defined here you read across the top of the book you you read the title the the bear and her book and then you see the moon and then you kind of go down the mountains and the uh, the throat of the bear and down to her purse or whatever that is she's carrying and then the book and the bylines across the bottom so it's very well defined Z layout. Um, this monochromatic sort of background really makes the brown fur stand out as well as the title and other things um, but it really helps the things that matter the most in the illustration stand out and I really think that was well executed here. You can see the bear the bear clearly and the book and everything else um, very clearly. It's also a very welcoming illustration. It's it's a pleasing illustration to look at. That bear has a very nice smile looking up at the moon and all of that. Uh, very pleasing. I, I really enjoy that one. 
So this one is interesting. The West Division, this is along, uh, I believe, not so much California, but I guess Seattle, Washington, and Oregon and that area. Uh, this book is The Last Contista, I guess it's pronounced. I'm not sure. Um, Donna Barbara Higuera, and it's published by Levine Querido. Sorry, I, <laughs> my pronunciations are so bad. Um, but let's take a look at this book. It's, it's definitely well-balanced and very contrasting artwork. You see the warm and cool tones here once again. Um, very symmetrical in its design. I, I really like the work that was put into providing the contrast and balance here. It's just a really beautiful, beautiful cover. Um, the, the title is also really well integrated. You can see the veins or, or vines, as you may call them. It's kind of hard to tell what's what there, but the, they sort of wrap around the letters in the title. And um, even though it's, it's pretty small, it's, it's very legible once again. It really stands out against the um, dark and harsh background. That white is really legible here. Um, so well done there. Um, I didn't want to go on just yet because this cover, you may not realize it by looking at it, but this is sort of a sci-fi book and you kind of get like this Southwestern, even Mexican vibe, but it's actually a sci-fi book and very interesting because um, I wouldn't have gotten that feel if, if I had just been looking at the cover. So uh, it's also a very intriguing cover and I, I would want to pick it up and see what the book is about. So I think that's, I think that's well done. It's, um, it's unfortunate that the uh, award stickers cover up most of the cover. I, I would have maybe gone with just one sticker or something, but uh, uh, well done cover here. So now we're in the Southeast division. Maybe this is my division in North Carolina. I can't remember anymore. But this is The Longest Let's Go Boy by Derek Wilder, published by Chronicle Books. It's a strong title. That black really stands out against the, let's call them pastel sort of color pencil or crayon uh, illustration. Really stands out well. A warm cover uh, or illustration, I should say. And uh, so that text really stands out there. The artwork is very simplistic, but there's also a lot of movement. Like you have this sort of desert, I guess, landscape, and then the movement in the sky around the setting sun is providing a lot of movement on the cover. Of course, the, the dog looks to be running here, which um, provides some of that movement as well. I would have liked to have seen the dog a bit closer, and, and this you know goes back to with children's books, you want to have the main character be a bit larger on the cover. Um, so that's something to keep in mind with children's book designs. I think this really works here. And this, this whole story is from the perspective of the dog. And uh, so that's where the longest Let's Go Boy title comes from. It kind of explores some of the, book, some of the words that maybe a dog would understand things. Like maybe if you're taking your dog for a walk, the dog might consider it a let's go boy instead of a walk. So interesting take there and, and uh, maybe worth checking out. This one is The Stuff Between the Stars. And this is by the International's Other Division. This is the division I'm in. And so The Stuff Between the Stars, the subtitle is How Vera Rubin discovered most of the universe. I don't know if this is a based on a true story or not. I didn't really look into it too much, but this is by Sandra Nickel, published by Abrams Books for Young Readers. This, once again, it's a bright character on a dark background, which really helps that character to stand out. And the character is facing the right way. She's facing to the opening of the book. It's very similar to that other book, um, Hello Star, I believe was the name of it. You have this girl with a telescope or whatever, and she's looking up into the stars. But this one, she's flipped the right way, and, and so it's leading the, character, leading the reader into the book. And much better executed here than 
I think the other one was, at least for that case. It's also an interesting subtitle placement, and I think that's because it's such a long title as well as a long subtitle. If you had had all that up at the top, the top half of the book, it would have been a lot to read. But by splitting it up, bringing that subtitle down and making the subtitle much smaller, which is something you definitely want to do to bring some hierarchy between the title and subtitle, it's also good to yeah, make that subtitle much smaller. So I like that they did this. It, it just kind of broke up the text a little bit more and, and made it a bit more balanced. So now we get up into Canada. And this is Tough Like Mum by Lana Button, published by Tundra Books. Um, I really love the playful connection here between the characters. It, it brings this sort of circular movement to the cover, which is really nice. The title really complements the artwork it's got that hand-drawn look to it it may even be hand-drawn instead of uh you know a stock font or anything like that so uh really works well with the uh the illustration here and um well balanced and and it's easy to read on the background as well that darker darker blue against the lighter blue of the wall really stands out well uh, you also notice little details in this illustration the more you look. So there's the patches on the couch and there's the writing on the wall. And, uh, you know, the, the mom is wearing two different socks and uh, little details like that. The whole story is has something to do with not really being perfect, but being tough. I think the artwork really supports the theme behind the story here. So this is the very last one. And this is the Southwest Division. Probably all of the books in this whole video have received multiple awards. This one as well has, has received multiple awards. This is by Andrea Wang and published by Holiday House. It is such an attractive, airy illustration that points to the character. So this character is very contrasted against the the background around her, the background is very sort of uh, cool colors or, or green and sort of washed out a little bit and very airy and open. And then you have this main character in the center. You've got these lines from the illustration that are leading towards the character, which is really nice. Um, it's a fairly thin font, but it really stands out as a title. There's plenty of white space and all of that there. Once again, I think that character should have been flipped around and faced the other way. Um, and I guess the, the whole illustration would then need to be flipped, but I think that's okay. It could have been done easily. It's difficult to read the bylines along the bottom here. The white text on the sort of busy background is a bit harder to read down here. I think they could have done more. And maybe with the physical book, if you have a situation like this, it might be a good idea to bring in some foil or some UV to uh, really make those bylines pop. That's a, an excellent way to do it. But when you're looking at it on screen here, it doesn't really translate well. So I would have thought about maybe changing the, the text color a little bit to stand out here. I think it's a really great idea to look at some of the books in traditionally published markets and um, see how you can not only make them better, but how you can take some little tidbits here and there to improve your own books. I think there should be a place for self-published books within these awards, and they should not limit themselves just to traditional publishers. But that's the way it is, and that's what we have to deal with right now as self-publishers. But I think, you know, even though you are, you may be a self-published author, you can make your book look just as great or even better than the books that are on the shelves by these large publishers. So that's really what I want to remind you. And just so you know, I am a book designer. I have over a decade of design experience. And uh, so if you're looking for a designer for your next book, I hope you'll reach out. You can reach me at launchmissioncreative.com. The link for my website is in the description below. You can also find links to all of these books on uh, in the description below for Amazon, 
for Book Depository. Think about joining SCBWI. Look into the division that you fit in and see what kind of engagement they have. They have all kinds of events and things in person that you can join as well as uh, virtual events and contests and, and all of that. But SCBWI also offers a lot of resources and other things online that you don't necessarily have to be there for in person with your division. They, they have global resources available. So it's definitely something to look into and see if it's worth it for you. Thanks so much. Y'all come back when you can stay longer.